Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to walk you through the fermentation uh, in the bag lab provided by Kansas Corn. My name is Brian Nelson and I teach uh, 7th grade science at Andover Central Middle School. And as stated earlier, I'm going to walk you through the lab of fermentation in a bag. Fermentation in a bag is one of my favorite labs to do with students. One of the reasons why I love this lab so much uh, from a teacher perspective is because it's very inexpensive. Almost everything that you see before you uh, as far as supplies go are things that um, you can purchase at a local grocery store. There's very little of anything that you would have to order special online. Also, everything that we have as far as supplies goes is extremely inexpensive. And because of that low cost, students can run lots of samples and get a lot of data and have a lot of time to just experiment and uh, be creative and come up with the products and the data that they're looking for. Also, it's very, very easy to clean up, which is another huge thing when it comes to a teaching in a classroom. Um, as far as the students go, um, as I said earlier, this can be differentiated up for your higher end students. It can also be scaled back. You can make this as lab as complicated um, or as simplistic as you would like it. Also, even within a class, different groups can be doing different levels of um, difficulty depending on where those groups are. First of all, I'd like to give you a little bit of background information on what we're doing. This is not something that I would normally tell my students up front. This is more for you. Um, I would like the students to explore and come up with a lot of this information themselves. But for the purposes of what we're doing today, I'd like to give you, again, a little bit of background information. So our ultimate goal is to produce ethanol, OK? And the way we're going to produce ethanol is we're going to use yeast. Uh, yeast are great. They produce ethanol naturally. It's a natural process that they go through uh, when yeast metabolize. And one of the great things is when the conditions are met and yeast are happy, uh, they will, and they have all the nutrients and things they need, they will start producing both ethanol and carbon dioxide. And there is a connection uh, between the carbon dioxide production and the ethanol production. So we can measure the carbon dioxide or the gas that is produced and we know that there's a direct correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide produced and the amount of ethanol produced. One of the things that we'll be doing in the lab is feeding them different types of food and we'll be using different types of enzymes. The different types of food that we're feeding them uh, have different complex levels of sugar. Today we'll be feeding the yeast two different things. One will be giving them a choice of food and, another, and the other thing we'll be giving them are some enzymes. When it comes to their choices of food, um, yeast uh, prefer to metabolize glucose, which is a very simple sugar. It's easy for them to metabolize. The simpler the sugar, the easier it is for them to break down. Some of the foods that we're going to feed in them today, the sugars are going to be on long chains called starches. In order to help those yeast break down those long chains into glucose so it's easy for them to metabolize and use, we're going to put some enzymes in. These enzymes help uh, break that down. Now the amylase uh, breaks down the starch into smaller uh, pieces of sugar where the uh, glucoamylase amylase enzyme is very specific and it can snip off uh, glucose molecules off the ends of those chains. So we have two different enzymes to uh, choose from today when we're doing our experiments. One of the things that we want to look at with students is talking about variables 
and identifying what variables are with kids. When they're doing this experiment, they identify what variable that they want to use. They want to make sure to keep everything else the same when doing this experiment. And there are several different variables that they can choose from. They can, their variable that they could change could be the type of feed or food that they're feeding the yeast. Another variable that they could use would be uh, the enzymes that they are using with the yeast. They could use um, just one enzyme, no enzymes, or a combination of the two. Um, it, when students uh, go further with this, I've seen students choose to use temperature of the water as a variable, or amount of water, or amount of food. So there are so many different things that they can change. The combinations are endless. Just as long as the students decide ahead of time what their variable and their change is going to be, and then they keep all the other elements of their experiment the same. As I stated earlier, the materials um, are very simple and easy to get. You can get from the grocery store. Um, today, I have provided for you some crystallized honey, uh, some k rose syrup that it works well. We have some ground corn, uh, some table sugar. We even have some corn uh, starch to use. Um, what the other thing you'll need will be the enzymes. These are actually provided by Kansas Corn. They come in a powdered form and they mix very easily. We're, we just do a one gram per hundred milliliters um, ratio. So if you need um, a small amount, you can do one gram for 100 milliliters. If you need a lot, you can do 500 milliliters of water and five grams of your enzyme. You just put them in uh, the container and shake them up. One thing that I will point out to you is when, before the kids take the enzyme, they will, you will want to have them shake their bottle because uh, that helps keep the enzyme uh, in the solution. All right, today we're going to make one bag to show you how uh, this works. Uh, today I'm going to use um, some corn as my feed, and then for my enzyme, I'll put in some glucoamylase. So we want to start off with 50 milliliters of warm water. Warm water is important because that helps the yeast uh, wake up from their suspended state. You don't want the water hot or scalding. Um, just warm tap water is perfect. Okay. Next, we're going to have the uh, students put in one teaspoon of whatever their food choice is. In this case, it is some ground corn. Okay. I'm going to have put in one milliliter of the enzyme. These pipettes work very well because they have the measurements right on them. And then we're going to put in one teaspoon of yeast. We're going to seal the bag. And we're going to gently mix, just as I'm doing here. Then you want the students to lay the bag on the table, open it slightly, and try to remove as much air as possible from your bag. Because what we're trying to measure is the amount of gas that the yeast produce. Next, the students will label what is in their bag 
And for this bag, we put in ground corn. And we use the amylase. And that card is just going to sit on top of your bag. The data collection that we're going to be using is very simple. As the um, yeast ferment over the next um, 20, 30 minutes of your class period, and this um, bag should start to fill with gas and the bag will uh, start to expand. By using a ruler, every five minutes, the students can measure how high this index card has risen. So it's a very easy way to measure uh, how much gas is produced. Now I have made some bags ahead of time. This was the ground corn and amylase. And here is a bag that has uh, some sugar and some amylase in it. So you can see the difference. And it's important for the students to note not only what works, but also what doesn't work. That's a discussion that you're going to want to have uh, with your students. Uh, note that when they're measuring this one, they'll have the, just they put it at the highest point of your bag and use your ruler to find the height of your index card. Another thing you can do is you can use breathalyzers to figure out how much ethanol is produced. I'm going to bring in Shelly with us today. Now, one thing I want you to know is that breathalyzers are designed to measure the alcohol content on a, for a human. They're not necessarily designed for this. So you're not going to get an exact measurement um, like you would if you were using this on a human. But it will let you make some relative comparisons uh, between your different bags. So if you have a bag like this that's nice and full of gas, you can take your syringe and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you open the bag just in the corner and we're going to put this uh, tube in and I'm going to try and draw out as much of the air in the bag as possible. All right, you can go ahead and at this point I should have the air collected in here. Now I'm going to have you hold this button down right here. One of the things it'll tell you will be collecting. Go ahead. It's warming up for 10 seconds. Oh, we gotta turn it so I can see when it's done. And then we're gonna push as much air as we can. You want to push a steady stream of air through the breathalyzer over the 10 second period that is shown on the display. And at the end, you should be able to get a reading. And this tells us that there is 0.4 uh, percent alcohol uh, detected in our bag. When you're done, you can have your students share out their data, make sure to have them explain what they believe is happening, uh, they can make their inferences, and again, the nice thing about this is you can have the students run as many bags as they would like because the materials don't cost very much. And as they learn from their first experiment, they can go back and do some more bags now, I also told you earlier that cleanup was very easy. So as far as cleanup goes, we just take our bag and we can throw the whole thing in the trash. All right, thank you very much. That was fermentation in a bag provided you for you by Kansas Corn. Thank you.